In certain professions, a minor misstep or miscalculation might lead to a mere inconvenience or a financial setback. However, imagine a role where the stakes are unimaginably higher, where the difference between success and failure holds the power to reshape lives and determine survival. Welcome to the world of engineers, where a single faulty calculation or oversight can shatter existence itself. In this realm, precision is not just a virtue, but an absolute necessity, as the consequences of failure are measured in lost lives or sometimes just red faces. So hold on to your hard hats as we have a look at the 20 craziest engineering fails in the world. Number 20. The Collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge The collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge is legendary. This incredible footage from the 1940s shows the amazing scene of the bridge blowing in the wind like laundry drying on a washing line. It has since become an example of how not to build a bridge. When architects developed the design for the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, they originally intended for the structure to be supported by some massive strong trusses to reduce any potential swaying. But the powers that be also decided that these would be too costly, and so they settled on a much less sturdy system of girders. A cheaper and more elegant Elegant design, but engineering usually needs to be based on the laws of physics rather than just looking pretty. Even during construction, the bridge's problems became fairly obvious. Workers who built the bridge gave the structure the nickname Galloping Gertie on account of the tendency of the bridge to move around alarmingly during windy weather. It was, in the end, the wind that would do it for this bridge. The persistent weather conditions created a kind of vortex, causing the structure to twist and flap in a manner that nobody really wants to see in a bridge, especially not when they're driving over it. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Transportation is an area in which the clever engineering brains of the world have to get things right all the time, or we all die. Imagine if those aircraft engineers kept stuffing things up. It would literally rain planes all the live long day. Or if train designers couldn't get their sums right, they would be constantly crossing their tracks and causing all kinds of disaster. Or perhaps a ship engineer messing up so much that a vessel getting launched would sink before it even left the dock. Well, these things do actually happen from time to time, but in general, the engineers are doing some fairly sterling work. At least I hope they are. Anyways, what do you think? As always, you can comment down below using the hashtag FancyTopic and let me know your opinion in relation to what you just saw on the screen. Number 19. Failure of the John Hancock Tower Now, the architect that was responsible for the John Hancock Tower in Boston must have felt a little bit sheepish. When it got windy, it used to be necessary to close all the blocks around the building as it was most famous for suffering from falling windows. A gust of wind could shake loose a pane of glass and send it heading alarmingly earthwards. And just look at that building. It's mainly windows. It was actually constructed from 10,344 panes of glass, and the thing is, there's no way to know which ones were likely to break free. As if randomly falling windows wasn't bad enough, the Hancock also suffered from being particularly wobbly up on the building's higher floors. Many of its occupants would complain of motion sickness as a result of the swaying. All of these problems were eventually solved, the windows all had to be replaced with tempered glass and adjusted to allow them to move just a little rather than crack as they had before. And engineers were employed to fix the building sway using a clever thing called a tuned mass dampener in order to counteract the motion of the building. Amazingly, the Hancock is now considered one of the world's safest skyscrapers. Number 18. Chernobyl Accident 1986 now, if you're relying on engineering to get even one thing done right, well, I would believe that all the stuff to do with nuclear engineering would be the most important. This disaster shows just how quickly an engineering fail can turn deadly and have implications that will last for literally millions of years. In 1986, the Chernobyl nuclear reactor suffered a catastrophic failure and radioactive material from the disaster spread over a wide area around the site. Following the evacuation,
evacuation and cleanup of the place, an official exclusion zone, known as the Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant Zone of Alienation, would be established. This zone was initially a 30-kilometer radius from the power plant where the meltdown had taken place, but it's also expanded into a more wide area of Ukraine over time that has passed since the event. The exclusion zone now covers an area of about 1,000 square miles. This is the immediate surroundings of the power plant itself, which is where the radioactive contamination is at its highest. Here, public access is highly restricted. There are several different administrators that are responsible for various zones and such, like in the area that's around Chernobyl. These different parts have various requirements, and this is still subject to change. As the radioactivity is slowly declining in the further reaches of the exclusion zone, there are plans to redraw the restrictions and reassess the boundaries as time goes on. Although the likelihood of drawing a large crowd to the area seems fairly limited, probably for a couple of thousand years anyways. Number 17. France's Trains Don't Fit Stations Back in 2014, the French railway operator bought lots of lovely and shiny new trains. Except it seems that somebody didn't get their measurements correct. They paid about $20.5 billion for a total of 1,860 new trains, but the only problem was that these trains were too big for more than a thousand of their stations. This is quite the problem, to be honest. But anyways, somewhat red-faced and sheepishly, the railway operator began modifying the platforms in the stations by simply trimming the edges to accommodate the extra width of these new trains. And when it was all said and done, they had to do this procedure in 1,300 out of a total of 8,700 stations all across France. It was all rather embarrassing and ended up being very, very expensive indeed. Number 16. The Sinking of the Titanic The sinking of the Titanic is the most famous and retold story of disaster at sea. It's captured the imaginations of filmmakers and writers, as well as basically everyone else in the century since it happened. The sinking of the Titanic on April the 15th of 1912 sent shockwaves around the world. It was, at the time, the worst civil disaster at sea of all time, and the seemingly needless loss of 1,500 lives was truly shocking. The story of the Titanic still haunts us today, as we continue to make films and television shows that retell the story and seek out the secrets of the ill-fated ship. The Titanic was an extremely large passenger ship, carrying 2,223 people on her maiden voyage. As such, its original design required 64 lifeboats, but when it came to the final decisions about such things, it was considered that the ship really didn't need all that many. The ship's owners were concerned that having the full quota of lifeboats would clutter up the deck and create a terrible eyesore for the first-class passengers. And of course, you know that simply wouldn't do. Besides, the Titanic was believed to be unsinkable. In fact, that is precisely the point that was made when anyone expressed any kind of concern about anything at all. The design of the ship was alleged to be able to withstand all sorts of strikes, in all sorts of situations, and to remain afloat. Except, as we know, she could not, and did not, survive the iceberg strike, prove that the engineering claims of being unsinkable were just a whole lot of hot air. Number 15. NASA Lost Its Orbiter Now, I don't know about you, but I expect that when NASA does its sums, well, they should be getting them correct. But it turns out that even the most clever space boffins sometimes cannot add up properly. But when they do get it wrong, it costs a whole lot of money. And those number crunchers did get it very wrong indeed. They lost their $125 million Mars Climate Orbiter when engineers forgot to convert the measurements from imperial to metric before the spacecraft was launched. Now, this is one of the rare occasions when the words epic fail are basically right. The navigation team used the metric system of millimeters and so forth, while the astronautics team used imperial measurements of inches and feet. Now, the two different measurements, well, they were never converted to make them match up, so the final sums for everything were completely out of whack. I mean, come on, people. It's not rocket science, is it? You know what else is not rocket science? Enjoying this video and leaving a like on it? I mean, the thumb is right there. You just gotta press on it. And maybe subscribe while you're at it so that you get more videos like this one in the future. Number 14. Basmani Market Roof Collapse Now, you may have heard 
Winter in Moscow is fairly chilly, and the city spends up to six months of the year with snow and ice as a daily thing to have to deal with. So it should not shock anyone to say that snow is likely to sit on the rooftops for a big part of the winter. 66 people died and a further 33 would sustain injuries when the entire roof of the Basmani Market Building in Moscow would collapse early one morning in February of 2006. The victims were mainly migrant workers from Azerbaijan and other nearby countries who had worked and lived in the market. If the incident had happened a bit later in the day, well, the death toll would have been much larger as the market would have been open and bustling with shoppers. But it looks as though disaster could have been prevented if people had just paid a little bit more attention, noticing that the 30-year-old building was looking a little bit worse for wear. Investigations that followed the tragedy concluded that it was the accumulation of a whole bunch of years of poor maintenance combined with the weight of the snow on the roof that had caused the collapse. And frankly, it's a very terrible thing. Number 13. Collapse of Lotus Riverside Block Number 7 this crazy site looks like when you're building with Legos and you don't get a solid enough base. You know, we've all been there. You know how it goes. But really, you do expect that people building with life-sized bricks and real people's houses and lives might have a bit more of a clue about the way that engineering works, or at least you would hope so. This 15-story apartment building at Lotus Riverside in Shanghai, China, was mercifully not yet inhabited when it tipped over. One construction worker would be killed, though, but incredibly, that was the only fatality in this seriously big blunder. The whole building toppled over in one, looking much like a giant had come along and simply shoved it. Windows and balconies all remained intact, as the whole building tipped itself completely horizontal. Investigations following the incident discovered that the excavations for a nearby underground car park had caused an imbalance in the foundations and placed them under too much pressure, causing the entire thing to simply give way. The speed of construction on some building sites in China has often been blamed for the lack of quality control in the building industry itself, and in this case, there was no covering up the big blunder, that is unless you've got a really incredible sales team who can come and convince purchasers that their apartments are meant to be on their sides. It's really the latest trend in architecture, you know. Number 12. Submarines That Sink Back in 2018, the Spanish Navy ran into a few embarrassing teething problems with their newly acquired S-80 submarine. To begin with, they found that it sank. Now, I know that's kind of part of the whole submarine thing, but it's also supposed to be able to float and drive around as well. Otherwise, it just makes life a little bit tricky. They were genuinely concerned that if it submerged, it might never come back up again. Basically, this had been the result of the submarine turning out to weigh 100 tons more than it should have. The problem was overcome by lengthening the entire thing, and after that, you would have imagined that they would have maybe double-checked all of their other measurements, but no, the submarine then turned out to be too big for its own dock. Jeez! This meant that the dock at the naval base had to be dredged and then completely reshaped as so it could accommodate the big fat submarine. The Spanish defense minister insisted that after everything had been corrected, the submarine was indeed completely viable and would all go ahead as planned. These submarines were supposed to replace Cold War era submarines from way back in the 70s, and it turns out that everything went bonkers due to one little misplaced decimal point. Number 11. Building Melts Cars a building, which accidentally became a death ray when the sun shines, well, although it famously rains in London all of the time, of course, when the sun does peek out from behind a cloud, there's a skyscraper that's waiting to turn those rays into a weapon. The building, that's affectionately called the walkie-talkie on the account of its shape, is covered with glass that's positioned in such a way that it magnifies the sun's rays and literally sets things on fire. You know, like a magnifying glass does to an ant. Local shopkeepers had been complaining that the front doors had begun to smolder and that their carpets had literally been catching on fire because of the obnoxious building's antisocial habits. But when a posh bloke parked his Jaguar opposite, returning an hour later to a melted exterior, that's when everything hit the headlines. You can't just go around melting fancy cars now, can you? Anyways, the result of all these shenanigans was that the City of London had to fix the building 
solving solar glare problem by putting up an awning to protect the streets below. The architect said that he never realized it was going to be so hot. But I guess he heard that thing about rain in London as well. Number 10. Ronan Point Partial Collapse this social housing tower block in East London in the UK was built during the 1960s as part of the post-war rebuilding scheme that had aimed to address Britain's chronic housing shortages. Sadly, as governments still seem to be proving, when it comes to social housing, the standards set are not always high enough to give residents the safety they deserve. Modern-day government's negligence would result in the catastrophic loss of life in the Greenfell Tower Fire of 2017, which is now the worst disaster in social housing. But before Greenfell, there was Ronan Point. On May the 16th of 1968, a woman by the name of Ivy Hodges put her kettle on for an early morning cup of tea, and this would set off a gas explosion that was caused by a faulty connection in her cooker, which then blew out the walls of her home and triggered a devastating progressive collapse of the corner of the entire building. This took down floor after floor of kitchens in the 22-story tower block, and it was only the early hour of the day. It was 5.45 a.m. after all, that prevented more than the four recorded fatalities because most people were still asleep and had not yet ventured into their kitchens. Absurdly, the Ronan Point building was brand new. Many of its tenants had only been in their new homes for a few months. The disaster showed that although on this particular occasion it was a gas explosion, the flaws in the building's design could have caused a collapse at any time even just strong gusts of wind could have actually brought it down. The Ronan Point disaster would lead to inquiries into the regulations of social housing and higher standards that were being introduced. But as we all know, these places are often neglected by governments and the lives of their residents are put at risk on a daily basis, all to save a few pennies. Making a cup of tea should not be such a dangerous activity, now should it? Number 9. Apollo 13 some of the trickiest of all the engineering is surely that of space exploration. That stuff requires so much clever maths and technical wizards that it's amazing how often it's actually gone right, but it does sometimes go wrong. The Apollo 13 mission, launched by NASA in April of 1970, was intended to be the third lunar landing expedition. However, just two days into the mission, a catastrophic event began to unfold. Approximately 56 hours after liftoff, an oxygen tank in the service module exploded, causing critical damage to the spacecraft. The explosion would result in a rapid loss of electrical power, the failure of vital life support systems, and a severe reduction in the available resources required for the mission. Astronauts Jim Lavelle, Fred Hayes, and Jack Swigert found themselves in a life-threatening situation, stranded approximately 200,000 miles from Earth. The primary cause of the explosion would be traced back to a damaged wire insulation in the oxygen tank, which ignited when exposed to the electrical current. The explosion not only destroyed the tank, but also damaged other systems that were critical for the mission's success. With the spacecraft crippled, the focus would then shift from lunar landing to the crew's safe return. NASA's ground control team, led by Flight Director Gene Kranz, worked tirelessly to develop contingency plans, which included the use of the lunar module as a lifeboat to sustain the astronauts during their journey back to Earth. Through ingenuity, resourcefulness, and the unwavering determination of both the astronauts and the ground control team, the crew of Apollo 13 safely returned to Earth on April 17, 1970, in a remarkable demonstration of human resilience and teamwork. Number 8. The Dubai Aquarium Leak Now, nobody enjoys a leaky aquarium, least of all the fish. In 2010, the Dubai Mall experienced a concerning event involving its own excessively massive aquarium. The Dubai Mall's renowned aquarium is home to a diverse range of over 33,000 living creatures, which includes more than 400 sharks and rays. A leak would be discovered at one of the panel joints, which prompted a partial evacuation of the mall and the arrival of numerous emergency vehicles. This may have been overkill, but what else are they going to do? The mall's maintenance team would quickly address the issue, fixing the leakage in order to prevent any impact on the aquarium's environment or the safety of the aquatic animals. Workers mopped up all the water from the affected area, and the property management owner of the mall confirmed the incident, assuring that the leakage was swiftly rectified and reiterated the absence of harm to the aquatic life. Everyone would breathe a sigh of collective relief about that, I'm sure. 
Mohamed Alibar, the chairman of the property management company, initially denied the existence of a leak, attributing the incident to a technical fault in the operating device, whatever that means. But after a massive operation and loads of witnesses, it became kind of difficult to keep up such a fabrication. Unfortunately for that guy, this occurred amidst heightened scrutiny on the property management company after the temporary closure of the observation deck at Burj Khalifa, their flagship project. Number 7. St. Francis Dam Now, you can make all the damn jokes you like, but getting a steady water supply to Los Angeles has never been a laughing matter. During the massive growth of the early part of the 20th century, this was a huge problem. Water was needed, and it was needed fast. So then comes William Mulholland, a chief engineer and general bigwig at the LA County Water Works, who had been in charge of the largely successful aqueduct that had brought water to the city in the previous decade. Mulholland was there to oversee the plans for the St. Francis Dam, which would create a reservoir outside of Los Angeles. The dam was completed in 1926. Right from the start, though, there would be problems. Before it was even full, cracks and leaks became apparent. But budgets were tight, time was short, and Mulholland was not averse to cutting the odd corner. As you already know, a cut corner in engineering can be quite the lethal thing. And it was. Despite Mulholland declaring the St. Francis Dam safe, at around midnight on March 12, 1928, the dam wall collapsed. Billions of gallons of water flooded down the valley, a tidal wave of 140 feet high washed away towns, destroyed homes, over a thousand in all really, and killed hundreds upon hundreds of people. And Mulholland? Well, as a bigwig, he was of course cleared of any charges, but his career was over. Even now, his name graces famous streets and structures all throughout LA County. Number 6. Aon Center Marble Failure in the center of Chicago is a building which was designed to make a massive statement, the Aon Center. Also known as the Standard Oil Company, or Big Stan, is one of the city's tallest skyscrapers. It's 83 stories tall and would be completed in 1972 to great acclaim. An architectural pioneer, Big Stan was revolutionary in the 1970s. Its steel skeleton made the building extremely strong and able to withstand the high winds and pressures that are often unique to such tall buildings. However, the building's architects wanted this massive skyscraper to look awesome as well. They settled on the idea of using marble cladding, 43,000 panels of the stone to be precise, that would make the structure stand out along Chicago's famous skyline. But as beautiful as marble may look, and it really does, it gleams like the buildings of ancient Rome. It's also fairly heavy stuff. Within the first decade of Big Stan, it would be discovered that all of those marble panels on the building were failing and could crash to the ground at any time. A pretty dangerous situation for anyone who happened to be wandering down below. And when they realized what a ticking time bomb the building had become, the owners had to act fast. A temporary solution of straps to hold the wonky slabs in place was followed up by the massive challenge of replacing every one of the 43,000 pieces of marble with granite. It seems insane, but they did it, and they didn't even have to close the building while they did. Number 5. The Collapse of the Quebec Bridge the overpass on the Boulevard de la Concorde in an area just outside of Montreal in Quebec, Canada, suddenly collapsed one Saturday in September of 2006. The complete disintegration on the section of highway happened rapidly, and there had been reports of problems in the days and hours leading up to the incident, but people had noticed that the road's integrity had seemed to be failing. Now, I'm no road expert. But if it looks like your overpass has got some big holes in it and people have complained that they can see through it, then it might just be time to have a look. The massive cave-in caused the untimely death of those unfortunate souls traveling in a vehicle below as the overpass crashed down and crushed their cars, as well as many other people who fell with the section as it broke off. Investigations following the tragedy concluded that the incident had been caused by several different problems all converging together to make one terrible mess. When the overpass had been designed and built back in the early 1970s, it had been estimated that it should last around 70 years, but it barely made it halfway. Back then, though, there was nowhere near the amount of traffic or the same level of road use that the overpass ended up carrying. It literally had worn out. Number 4. Collapse at Paris Airport 
On May the 23rd of 2004, a significant portion of Terminal 2E at Charles de Gaulle Airport suddenly collapsed, resulting in tragic fatalities. The incident shook France's busiest airport, situated approximately 15 miles northeast of Paris. Terminal 2's futuristic design had been praised for its aesthetics and practicality. Its lack of internal roof supports allowed passengers to navigate the terminal with ease. However, some engineers theorized that the tunnel-like shape of the terminal may have contributed to the collapse. Structures without internal supports rely entirely on the outer shell for its stability. The collapse, which claimed the lives of four individuals, injuring three others, created a hole that measured 50 by 30 meters in the tubular design. The official investigation report would attribute the fatal collapse to both design flaws and construction oversight, and following the investigation and meticulous disassembly, the structure was then reconstructed with a metal framework built upon its existing foundation. It then reopened in the spring of 2008. Number 3. The Leaning Tower of Pisa the most famous architectural fail of all time is also one of the world's biggest tourist attractions. And on average, about 5 million people per year visit this place and will happily pay $20 to go into the wonky building. This is the most famous of all leaning towers, and basically it would be built on a particularly squidgy short of clay mixture that was not strong enough to support the weight of the building on top, and so it began to lean to one side. During construction way back in 1178, when they realized that this was happening, they simply stopped building it, and it stayed that way, unfinished and lopsided for a hundred years. Then another engineer came along with a great idea. He wanted to add some more floors to the tower and thought that he could counteract the lean by making one side of them taller than the other. But guess what? That made it lean even more. Other bits were added in the 14th century and it kept on leaning. And then in 1838, another engineer had another great idea, which as you guessed, made the tower lean even more. Eventually, everyone just went with the lean and embraced the tower's uniquely jaunty angle. In 1987, the Leaning Tower of Pisa became a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and some special safety features were added in, protecting its wonkiness for future generations to come. Number 2. The Vasa Disaster the Vasa ship, a grand undertaking of its time, featured elaborate carvings adorned with biblical, mythical, and historical motifs. No expense was spared in its construction, aiming to create the most awe-inspiring vessel. However, the abundance of these decorative elements inadvertently raised the ship's center of gravity. In August of 1628, the ship set sail from Stockholm Harbor. After merely covering a short distance of two nautical miles, a gentle gust of wind measuring eight knots struck the ship. The wind was so light that the sails were manually extended, requiring only one person to hold the sheets. Surprisingly though, even under such mild conditions, the ship listed to its side, allowing water to flood through the gun portals. Eventually, it succumbed to the depths of the harbor, tragically claiming the lives of 53 individuals. The ship's captain would survive the incident, but was promptly imprisoned on grounds of incompetence. A formal hearing would then be conducted in September of that same year, which led to the release of the captain and crew while dropping the charges of incompetence. However, a conclusive reason for the disaster still remains elusive to this day. Number 1. Death Ray at Vegas Hotel Back in 2010, the then newly constructed Vidara Hotel was experiencing a rather embarrassing problem. This is yet another modern building that has turned into an unexpected death ray. Many of its guests had noticed that the glass building of the hotel was magnifying and reflecting the sun's rays directly into the pool area, and this was, as you may imagine, causing some upset amongst the swimmers. Now, many of these people were out there to catch some rays, but they were not so keen to catch on fire. The increased strength of the sun was actually so powerful that it had managed to melt plastic and even singe people's hair. The hotel came up with a simple solution to the problem, umbrellas. How genius. But what if architects had tried to not build such a crazy structure that could start a fire in the first place? It's just a thought, you know. Well, I've been walking around just trusting that things aren't going to start randomly dropping off of buildings, but now I'll never look at another structure again without a healthy dose of fear. How about you? Too scared to go downtown now? Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.